Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Coming up, shooting machine guns in the desert. I'm off to Las Vegas to the SHOT Show, the biggest expo of hunting kit in the world. We've got new stump, we've got hunting YouTube. First, Roy visibly ages trying to shoot a squirrel. Now, Roy has often been hailed as the postman. He always delivers. Well, of late, he's lost his mojo. Not with everything, just squirrels. They've been taking the biscuit, giving him the runaround for months. We've calculated we have spent more than 30 hours of filming time trying to get a shot at a squirrel with an air rifle. It shouldn't be that difficult. They are everywhere. But from the outset of this sorry squirrel stalking story, it's been a disaster. We start in Woodland in Sussex and Roy is getting his eye in. Before we go have a look in the woods, what I want to do is just make sure the air rifle is spot on and shooting true. So uh, what better way of uh, making sure than going and shooting a squirrel's nuts. <laughs> We're in the area where I've been stalking quite a lot. And when we've been stalking, we've noticed a huge population of squirrels in here. So we're going to try and shoot some with an air rifle this morning and uh, see how we get on with it. The squirrels are here, but they're not sitting still enough, long enough for us to get the camera set up on the scope, get it in focus, then shoot. Roy takes his frustrations out on some more nuts. When you're shooting squirrels with an air rifle, you do have to be very precise because they are a, a tough beastie. They've got a very thick skin and they're a very muscular animal. So the best shot that you can possibly get with a, a sub 12 foot pound air rifle anyway is a head shot if you can get it. A chest shot if you're smack on the uh, heart and lungs oh. will do it as well, but I do try to, to get a head shot if possible. And I swear it wasn't this difficult when I was a boy. <laughs> they are seriously tricky little customers to uh, get on top of. We're just seeing them feeding and then every single time we try and stalk into them within air rifle range, bearing in mind I want to shoot about 30, 35 yards maximum. Then they're just mooching around and just heading off into a tree and even just trying to acquire a decent shot on them. They're so mobile, it really, really is tricky. So uh, I, yeah, I forgot how much fun it was actually, it really is good. Well, we know the Webley Raider Nico Sterling combo is working fine. We just need to get the greys to play ball. Or maybe we need to start loading the dice. Trail cams are a wonderful tool, and we know from these images we're in squirrel country. Fingers crossed we're going to be sitting up in a high seat. They've been coming into within about 15, 20 yards, which is absolutely perfect for the air rifle. And I'm just hoping that when we're sitting up in the tree, they're not going to uh, make us too quickly and disappear. I mean, they are very clever little animals, so <laughs> the chances are they might see us sitting up there and think, not today, folks. It's unusual, if not a little ostentatious, to shoot squirrels from a high seat, but it's worth giving it a go. The feed station should elicit some action, but nothing. Again, Roy's frustrations <laughs> boil over, and he throws this into the mix. Well, after being defeated once again by squirrels, I am really, really starting to get the feeling that they don't like us. So we have spent another few hours sitting in a high seat over a perfectly good bait station where we've got hundreds, I mean, I mean hundreds of pictures of squirrels coming out and feeding. <laughs> and yet when we sit up in the high seat, absolutely nothing moves. I think we're going to be coming back out and having another try. And I guarantee when we do, I'm going to make sure we savour the moment. So I've built up quite an appetite sitting up in the high seat and I really do fancy satay squirrel. Could be interesting. More trail cam images around another hopper show more squirrel action. This time Roy makes a ground level blind. We leave it for a week while the UK gets battered with appalling weather. Then we venture out again. This time the law of sod has been active again. There is no grain on the floor under the feeder. The spring has jammed. We wait still and camoed up for three hours. Nothing. How many hours have we spent trying to get a squirrel? I don't know how many hours we've spent trying to get a squirrel. I'm fed up with spending hours trying to get a squirrel. My bottom has never been this numb waiting for a squirrel. Uh, yeah, it's, um, I've, I've spent a lot less time trying to get trophy deer in the past than I have done for a trophy squirrel. 
Desperate and demoralised, we spend another full morning in a woodland which holds a few pheasant pens. We're told they're usually riddled with the little blighters. We get a lock on one, but the scope camera starts playing up. Not one to give in, Roy heads out alone. And after another four hours clocked up in the name of Squirrel, he is able finally to get the crosshairs on one. So all we're going to do is we're going to take the meat from the squirrels, meat from the rabbit, dice it up, we're going to marinate it for a couple of hours and then we're either going to grill it or barbecue it. Up there, and down there. Although it looks like boil in the bag, he assures us it isn't and that he's keeping the rest of the squirrels not as trophies but to be used as part of an experiment in our new show Airheads, dedicated to air guns. If you're doing it for survival and you've got the choice of hunting squirrel and hunting rabbit, one rabbit gives you double the amount of two squirrels and it was a lot easier to catch as well. Roy and some goshawk taken rabbit and following a Hugh Fernley Whittingstall recipe rustles up something appetising. That's rabbit, that's softer meat. The squirrel definitely seems to be a little bit tougher. There's not a lot of meat but enough to say we had squirrel for tea. Or was it fox? Finally, the chaps are dressed and ready for squirrel saute. And it's not that bad. Thumbs up for squirrel. Right. Amazingly, it's very good, isn't it? In this country, we do like the idea of eating what we shoot. So if you haven't tried squirrel already, why not give it a go? And I hope you won't need to invest a full day to get one. Great stuff. Now, it's news, but not as you know it. It's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Britain News. The people behind the rifle that cannot miss have brought out a new firearm, the machine gun that cannot miss. OK, not strictly a machine gun, but the new 500 series AR smart rifle can track targets moving up to 10 miles per hour and up to 500 yards away. Once the scoping system has tagged the target, the rifle does the rest, all for around £6,000. Badgers are back in the news in the UK. A Green MP has accused the government of using an audit of the trial culls in the West Country last year as a way to argue for extended culls in the future. The technicalities are too tedious to go into, safe to say the government denies it. Animal rights group PETA uses drones to keep track of hunters. Now hunters are using drones to keep track of animals. Eric Solheim, a Norwegian, filmed this moose with a quadcopter outside Oslo. Some hunting groups defend the practice, saying it's now more sporting than using trail cams. Others condemn it. Indian police are looking for a tiger that's killed four villagers in 12 days. It escaped from the Jim Corbett National Park. A 40-year-old woman was attacked and killed last week. Authorities want to have it categorised as a man-eater, so it can be shot. Police in Ohio have received an anonymous letter in which the person apologises for accidentally killing a deer stalker. 45-year-old Larry Bradley, an Iraq war veteran, was fatally shot in December. Police don't know who shot the man and his family have put out a statement to say that an apology is not enough. An American hunting club has received death threats over its planned auction of a black rhino hunting permit, despite insisting that all funds will go to conservation efforts. The FBI is reviewing multiple threats made against members of the Dallas Safari Club. The rhino, which is in Namibia and is considerably rarer than the white rhino, made $350,000. Field Sports Channel had its own rhino controversy over the weekend. In Saturday's Headhunter Chronicles, Jason Bruce went out bow hunting rhino and lion and shooting buffalo and elephant. The elephant was a rogue male and he darted the rhino by bow, a fact which some antis who commented failed to spot, indicating they'd not watched the film. This kind of green hunting brings in hundreds of thousands of dollars to conservation in Africa, but we wanted to know whether Field Sports Channel viewers think it's acceptable or not. The split is generally down the national lines. US and continental viewers tend to be in favour, British against. Iceland is split over the puffin hunting season. 
poor breeding seasons in 2011 and 2012 saw puffin hunting was banned in some areas of Iceland. Now animal rights groups and some scientists are recommending making the ban nationwide. Here's TV chef Gordon Ramsay cooking puffins for a Channel 4 documentary. And finally, in Mexico, scientists have discovered the carcass of conjoined twin grey whale calves. They believe it's the first case of Siamese grey whales, though they have been found in both fin and minke whales. You are now up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. I'll send you a postcard. Now here's a few electronic postcards. It's Hello Charlie. Here's what the world's up to this week. Hello Charlie. Kevin and Declan out a bit of rough shooting in County Tyrone, Northern Ireland on this beautiful day in January. With a little bit of success too. Happy New Year to you. Hello Charlie, it's Jonathan Young. I'm the editor of The Field. How are you? <laughs> I've been beating for this pile of hooligans today. <laughs> <laughs> Terrifying, aren't they? Charlie, um, very soon here in Hertfordshire. Don't know if you can hear or see, but it's starting to hail. And there's a bit of a storm brewing. So me, the lurcher, and the ferrets and the rabbits are taking refuge under a hedge for a bit until it calms down a bit. Hello, Charlie. I'm Ollie. And I'm Barney. Just in Suffolk, doing a bit of fox shooting. Managed to get this vixen with a 178 demand. Cheers, Charlie. Cheers, bye. Hello, Charlie. Sonny Murray calling from Nova Scotia, Canada. Just out on a little grouse hunt a couple of days after Christmas. Doodly doo. Send us your own Hello Charlie. Film yourself on your mobile phone. Just a sentence saying Hello Charlie, who you are and what you're up to. Then share it or email it via YouTube, Facebook, Dropbox or you send it, you name it, to charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Right, I may be here, but I'm going to go over there. I'm off to America for the SHOT Show 2014, unless I miss my flight. Well, it's the SHOT Show Media Range Day in the Nevada desert, full of mind-blowing, ear-pummeling kit. And everybody I'm going to talk to here, without exception, is going to try and sell you, the shooter, their products. With that government health warning, prepare for the new. Here is the future of foxing. The Hauer Cryptic model comes in a range of fascinating camo patterns. This is our new Hauer Cryptic model. It comes with a Hauer M1500 barreled action, six, number six contour, heavy barrel, 20 inch. Comes with a Nico Sterling 4 to 16 44 scope. It, it's dipped in uh, Cryptic camo, your choice of Typhon, which is this one. We also have a Highlander, which is kind of a greenish camo pattern. And we also have Raid, which is like a snow camo. It kind of looks like a crocodile. <laughs> well, the theory behind this is, is the variegated versions of the pattern blend in better, whether it's horizontal, vertical, uh, square shaped, odd shaped. Everything plays into the height ability of this camo pattern, and it disappears very well. Based on the Hauer 1500, there's more about the Cryptic at LegacySports.com. So, Rick, why should I buy one? Hideability and reliability. It disappears into its background, and a Hauer 1500 is one of the most accurate out-of-the-box barrel actions you're ever going to buy. I'll take five. <laughs> Did I sell that good? You sold it good. Rather more sedate is the latest version of the Blaser R8, a rifle that celebrates its sixth birthday this year. Until this year, the R8 had a traditional two-piece stock and receiver. This year, we're proud to release a uh, rifle we call the Classic Sporter. It is a one-piece stock design that uh, Blazers put a lot of time and effort into. Uh, it's definitely more of a North American or Western looking uh, stock design, traditional one-piece. Uh, Rigby cheek piece, uh, inletted sling swivels, custom pistol grip cap, uh, ebony fore end. It's just a, a classic and traditional looking stock. Now Americans have a reputation for solving problems by flooding areas with men and machines. On the machines front, this gives them a technological edge. Here's a product designed to be cutting edge tech at a surprisingly low price. It's the, uh, the X320, this is a handheld thermal imager. Uh, it has a 320 by 240 detector in it, 
And the beauty of it is it's a 17 micron, which the micron part is the size of the picture. So just like your television, you want to have something that has the smallest pixel size with the most pixels. We have personally used them and detected live animals out at half a mile. Uh, this particular one, uh, it retails at $34.99. $3,499. Okay, it's still fairly fruity on the price front, but Ed predicts that prices of all tech on display here will come down. Well, I think the next technology that you'll probably see is uh, what's called Fusion. And Fusion technology is an overlay of traditional night vision and thermal technology. Staying with innovation, Winchester has come out with a new shot shell. The difference in tracker and tracer is this is a non-incendiary round. So if uh, there's a risk of fire, uh, that's obviously not a problem with this because it's simply a wad design uh, that allows you to be able to see exactly where you're shooting. Uh, there are one in an eighth ounce loads. There's an eighth of an ounce that gets captured within the shot cup within the wad. That gives the wad weight, which allows it to travel downrange right behind the shot string, uh, which allows you to see exactly where you're shooting. If you miss, you can see if, uh, if you break the target, obviously you see the wad go right through the broken target. And who was it who came up with Tracker? Belgian boffin or good old American know-how? <laughs> well, we do have to claim credit for it. <laughs> American design. I give it a go and can confirm it's a sweet, fast-firing cartridge. The wad makes no difference to the shot string. Find out more at bit.ly slash Winchester Tracker. There's all kind of hardware making an awful racket today, and in between it all is the relative peace and quiet of an air gun stand. Nitro Piston 2 is a revolutionary new product from Crossman. The brake barrel rifles. What it is, we've, re we've reversed the gas spring, and the piston is actually a precision engineered split piston design. And we've changed the levering action for the, uh, for the cocking lever. It's a single lever that does not depend on the stock. And what that means is that there's a 10 pound reduction in cocking force. It's right about 30 pounds. It's very easy to cock. We're, we are now driving 30% more air in the chamber. And we've, we've done that without making that chamber any larger. Find out more at crossman.com. For more on air guns at SHOT Show, see our new programme, Airheads, next episode out on Thursday, the 23rd of January. Now, it wouldn't be the SHOT Show Media Day if I didn't get to play with firearms that would have me banged up in Britain faster than I can say it's a fair cop, but society's to blame. So if you want to know the future, the future is Turkish. This firm, SAR Arms, is the US side of a Turkish manufacturer that's been selling guns since 1890 and I'm going to have a go with something we're not allowed to use in the UK. In this scene, I'm being attacked by zombies. Won't get any more trouble out of him. We'll be bringing you more from the States next week. Next, let's see what the world has to offer. It is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. Viewer Dragon of the East Blue recommends New Zealand Red Stag, Stag Nation, by American hunting superstar Keith Warren. Anything but stagnant, Keith is spotting and stalking the Red Stags in New Zealand. Basque Films has brought out an instructional video on how to use its green shoots mapping. The film is basic, but if you haven't come across the service, it's superb. It maps your shoot and contributes to a nationwide database that will ultimately persuade government about the conservation benefits and the voting power of shoots. Here's some exciting falconry. It's a bit fuzzy, but you get the picture. That's one rabbit that values its liberty. A good season for woodcock means it's a good season for woodcock films. Chasse Bay Casse avec deux cameras shows video chasse pêche com at work on them in France. Next we go to Africa with videographer Peter Novak for Hunting in Africa 2013 with FN Hunting. Lots of big game and planes game action packed into just a few minutes. I'm all for government agencies putting money into something worthwhile. Speckle belly goose hunting on the Arkansas Grand Prairie is the new film by the State Wildlife Department, Arkansas Game and Fish. White fronted geese are wintering in Arkansas in greater numbers than ever, creating exciting new shooting opportunities for waterfowlers. Staying in the USA, we take to the woods of Pennsylvania for some deer drives with flintlocks with the Living for the Outdoors channel. Alan drops his first flintlock deer and Nick pulls off his second long shot of the season. Finally, hunting Neil Guy in Texas for no better reason than that's what I will be filming this weekend.
weekend. A quarter of the world population of this Indian antelope lives in Texas. You can click on any of these films to watch them if you are missing the fishing films and the air gun films. Watch our new shows, Airheads and Fishing Britain. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, send it in via YouTube or email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, if nothing took your fancy there, here's a few offerings from Field Sports Channel. Last week, we launched Airheads for Air Gunners and Fishing Britain. From homemade wind tunnels to shooting rogue squirrels to technical expertise, we had it all. Thank you to those who have already watched it and given us great feedback. Fishing Britain is another first for us, presented by Howell Morgan. The Welsh fly fishing ace amazingly caught a fish as the country was battered by appalling rain and wind, and I decided to surf and fish the seven boar tidal surge, 007. Also, Jason Bruce is hunting the big five in Africa, bow hunting a lion and a rhino. And Jeweled Visser, the African barbecue hunter, is out bird shooting in Namibia. Click on the links on the screen to watch the films. Well, we are back next week. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button that's somewhere around the outside of the screen or go to our YouTube channel where you'll see our other programs on offer or our website, fieldsportschannel.tv, where you can click to like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter or scroll down a bit and you can pop your email address into our constant contact box and we will constantly contact you about our programme, Field Sports Britain, that's out at 7pm on Wednesdays UK time or Airheads twice monthly, 7pm on Thursdays or Fishing Britain, 7pm every week on Fridays. This has been Field Sports Britain. Goodbye, good hunting, good shooting and good fishing. <laughs>